honor to do with with no return or no payment or no nothing because I did my job as a U.S. citizen. And so you I did it for honor and justice? Absolutely. Not a penny for the first six months and then another three months for the INS. And then I started with the terrorist squad. At that time, it was assassination in Manhattan for a Jewish rabbi. His name is Ma'ir Kahana by uh, an Arab person. And the FBI didn't have enough information about what's going on inside this group. They asked me to go inside, and I did. And I became a member of El Sayyid Nusir, which is the assassin of Ma'ir Kahana, the, his uh, 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 group of raising fundraising and uh, collecting money to support his defense. And he was being defended by um, a, a Jewish lawyer, his name is William Kanzler. He is no longer with us now, he passed away. However, Said Nusser was acquitted in the first part, but because of the information I provided, uh, I went to Said Nusser in prison in, yeah, in, 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 um, in Attica, and in Rikers Island, and um, he told me that he did uh, do the assassination, and he described it to me in details how he did it, because I was one of the insider at that time, and he thought that I am a fanatic as well, and I uh, I am going for the assassination of human beings, which I don't. Uh, no matter what the agreement or disagreement with somebody else, he's a human being, I have no rights to take his life. But that was a fatwa from the blind sheikh, Sheikh Omar Abdul Rahman. Um, it came a day during my infiltration to Sayyid Nusir's group, I was approached by one of the Joint Terrorist Task Force Special Agent John Antisev, and he showed me a newspaper picture for the blind sheikh. He said, do you know this person? I said, yes, this is Sheikh Omar Abdul Rahman, who assassinated my president, Anwar Sadat. At that time, I was still in the service in the Egyptian military, and I was present during the parade President Sadat was assassinated in. And uh, I said, uh, Asian John told me that this man is in New Jersey. I said, my God, how did he came to New Jersey? He said, well, that's unknown at this time. But uh, what do you think? I said, I think he is a very dangerous man. This man, wherever he go, people drop dead. And he is on the terrorist list. How did this man came into America? Lo and behold, he said, can you approach him? I did approach the blind sheikh, and I get very close to him, um, uh, uh, covertly, of course, and then he asked me to go on a trip with him for fundraising into Detroit. At that time, the FBI provided me with a van. Uh, that van was electronically bugged through uh, a certain chopper, uh, they, they, they have their way of recording the information. But during our trip from New York to Detroit, the blind sheikh asked me, I heard that you are retired from special ops in Egypt. I said, yes, sir. Okay, do you, are, uh, do you know how to shoot? Said, yes, sir, of course. Are you a sharp shooter? I said, yes. He said, okay, if you wanted to repent from serving an infidel government, then you need to assassinate President Hosni Mubarak. At that time, Mubarak was coming the next Wednesday. It was shocking for me to have a straight order from the blind sheikh, uh, uh, because he got the whiff first from his followers that I'm collecting money for Sayyid Nasser, I'm one of the close people that the Nasser group, and that's why he attempted to give me that order. And of course, all of that's being recorded on tapes. I said, okay, I think that's a good idea. I did not decline. And I made a point to bring that to the attention of my handlers at that time, which is Special Agent John Antisev and uh, uh, Detective Louis Napoli from the terrorist squad in the New York office. We came back from Detroit and uh, the blind sheikh requested me to visit Said Nusir in Attica, 
I went to visit him in Attica. He gives me the order to build a bomb. Do you know how to build a bomb? I said, of course, um, it's special ops. He said, okay, I would like you to build a bomb and uh, kidnap uh, Henry Kissinger and Judge uh, Duffy, who ruled against him in this case. And if you can kidnap an FBI agent, that would be great. So you can bargain to release me. I said, okay, Sheikh, that's a good idea. And I went back, I reported that to my handlers. From this point on, I start to ask Said Nusir in the next visit, how am I going to build the bombs? I don't have materials. I don't know what to do. And that's as per the instructions. I was instructed by my handlers in the JTTF not to dictate or not to suggest targets or not to suggest bombings. But I always ask open end question. And my open end questions, how am I going to build the bomb? I don't have material. Said Nusir described to me where to go in Canal Street, what street, what is the name of the store, where to buy the fuse, where to buy the explosives. I said, great. I came back from Attica. I went to Canal Street. I bought the fuse and I went to my handlers in the bureau. At that time, they said, it is getting very serious. We have to bring you up to the ASAC. The ASAC and the FBI means assistant special agent in charge. His name is Carson Dan Barr, and he is in charge of the counterterrorism in the New York office at the time. I said, Sayed Nusir requested from me to build a bomb, told me where to get the materials. Here is the fuse. I got it. And now I need to know what to do. He said, I got to put you on the box. I said, what do you mean box? Got to put you on a polygraph. Well, I have been working with you guys almost for a year now with the Russian squad, with the, with the INS, with the Nusir assassination. And now you're coming to tell me you want to polygraph me? You have no trust? He said, no. Put me in the polygraph is not going to get a result, Mr. Carson. He said, why, Salem? I said, because I know how to fool the machine. He said, I don't care. Put him on a box. They got an examiner, put me on the box. And the conclusion came that unconclusive result. So I went to Mr. Dan Barr. I said, I told you so. He said, I don't care. Put him on another examiner for another polygraph. I went for the second polygraph, came unconclusive. He called Washington headquarters for the FBI, brought the head of the examiners from Washington to, to conduct the test by himself. So it will not be uh, unconclusive as usual. The gentleman who came from the headquarters rubbed me wrong and he conducted a test and I proved him that I can fool his machine. And I'm being frank about it because I have nothing to hide. Yet he came that uh, it is unconclusive, but his feeling is that I am deceptive. And that became a personal uh, 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 disagreement between me and the examiner. This is the third exam in one week. And it came unconclusive, but once he go to Washington, I became deceptive. I said, I really sure. don't Sure, and just to be clear, polygraphs are now basically not admissible because all you've got to do is stay upset the entire time at every question, and then it's just all over the map. There's other ways to beat them. They're only there to fool people into thinking that they know you're lying. They do exactly. have some brain scans now that are more accurate, but even those uh, are fraudulent. It's a quack machine so that they can basically demonize whoever they want. But regardless, your whole story has come out in the Washington Post, New York Times. What happened to you was recorded coming up. You've been proven to be accurate and correct. I think the polygraph thing is interesting, but not that important in the final equation. And we have Ahmad Salem, the former Egyptian military colonel, worked in intelligence, you name it, became a citizen, moved to the U.S., began working with the FBI, infiltrating very dangerous uh, Russian type assassination groups, then infiltrating uh, radical Islamic groups that were assassinating people, if you just tuned in. Uh, again, the New York Times tapes to pick proposal to thwart bomb used in Trade Center blast. He's building up to win 
okay, they've built the bomb, they're, they're real terrorists, now let's bust them, and the FBI basically lets it go forward. Uh, continue telling the rest of the story. Then I want to move forward to, to the intel that's really important. Okay. Uh, because, uh, I mean, your take on ISIS, Obama, the radicalization, all the things that are happening. Uh, please, uh, Mr. Salem. Yes, sir. Uh, it came to the point that Mr. Carson Dunbar started to like, dislike me personally, that there are three examiners come unconclusive. He insists that I wear a wire. I was working as an intelligence gathering uh, asset, as they described it, and I never had intention to testify and become a star witness and all of the above. But at that moment, if I wear a wire, as he requested, I will be obligated I will become a character witness and I will be obligated to testify in an open court. And at that time, I have a family, I have a wife, I have two children. I don't want to jeopardize their life by open, uh, uh, disclosing my, my covert work. Uh, Mr. Dambar insists, I said, I'm willing to, put the, to wear the wire and bring you the information on that tape that Mr. Nusir asked me to build the bomb, if that's what you're concerned about, but I don't testify in court. He said, no, then go home. I said, go home? The people asking me to build the bomb, you're telling me, and I'm the only one who is giving you ears and eyes inside the cell, you tell me go home? He said, yes, go home. I said, okay. And I told the three agents who were standing at the door, of Mr. Danbar, Agent John Anisiv, Agent Louis Napoli, Detective Louis Napoli, and Agent Nancy Floyd. I said, okay, I'm going home. But if the bomb got built on, get built, get built, and went off, don't come and knock on my door. That was November 1992. December came and I got bombarded by phone calls from the mosque in Queens by Mahmoud Abu Halima and other members of the cell to come to continue building the bombs. And I refused. I said, I'm scared of the FBI. They are monitoring me and surveilling me. And I pulled completely out of the cell. And that's at the time when Sheikh Omar reached out for Afghanistan. And I know how his communication to get around being traced. He was going to Osama bin Laden via fax machine in his bedroom in New Jersey, because I saw that myself, and requested another bomb builder. And that's when Ramzi Ahmad Yusuf came to the country with Ahmad Adad. Ramzi Ahmad Yusuf came to the country, took over building the bomb. And at that time, I assumed that the FBI continuously monitoring these people because I give them their names, I give, they have their pictures, they uh, 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 um, subpoenaed them, they have their fingerprints, they have the whole information. But unfortunately, they didn't follow up on them. Ramzi Ahmad Yusuf came, built the bomb, went off in 1993. I was in my front room watching TV, and then I hear that there is a bomb went off in the World Trade Center. I called my wife, I said, honey, they did it, it's been built, it's done. And then, as I expected, they came to knock on my door, come back, because the bomb went off. This is a crucial point. It was not a black flag operation, it's not a false operation. It's a real crazy idiots, fanatics, who wanted to commit jihad under the leadership well, of sir, the Well, sir, sir, I want to be clear and not split hairs here, Colonel. I consider a false flag when you know something's going on, you've got a $50 million budget like the FBI and Justice Department have, and then you don't go stop people. If I know that my neighbor is going to kill his wife tomorrow, he tells me I'm going to kill my wife when she gets home in the garage and say she committed suicide, and then he kills her, I'm aiding and abetting. I'm now an accomplice because I didn't do anything. So that's my point. Yes, I know they're real crazy jihadis. I understand that. I know you tried to stop them. My point is, that's still a false flag in my view, because you let them do it. But we can come back and argue that point. Yes. I then want to move forward to how you recorded them to protect yourself and the rest of it. And then we're going to come back and get into your view on ISIS, the, the attacks in Paris.
Barack Hussein Obama. I know you want to talk about him. This is big what's coming up, folks.